Matt Baldwin of Baldwin Blades. That's a lot of bees. I wonder if that's why his logo is also a bee. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank Wallo and today we will be reviewing a knife from American Knifesmith Matt Baldwin of Baldwin Blades. So who is Matt Baldwin? Let's talk about his origin story a little bit and then I'll tell you what he sent me. We'll do an unboxing, we'll do a food demo and finally we'll do the knife review. Matt Baldwin is an American knife smith from Grays Lake, Illinois, which is a suburb north of Chicago. Now, Matt Baldwin was not always making knives. He is a very skilled and experienced both craftsman and woodworker. And of course, as most people, when the pandemic hit, it led to isolation, led to a change of life and pace. And so he decided he would start making knives of his own. Now, he is someone who already has experience owning a Japanese kitchen knife. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, his first Japanese kitchen knife was a Masamoto VG10, 210 millimeter Kyoto. And that is kind of what inspired him to want to build knives of similar style. He loved the form and function of Japanese kitchen knives. And so during the pandemic, he started building in his uh, garage just for fun. But of course, as sometimes happens just for fun, friends start to like his products, they start to encourage him, they start to pay him for his knives, and that money was spent reinvesting in more tools. And so here we are, just a little over two years now since, of course, the start of pandemic, almost three, and that's who Matt Baldwin is. Now, disclaimer, he did send me this knife at no cost, but the opinion is always going to be my own. And what he did send me was a 214 millimeter Gyoto, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into the unboxing and I'm trying something a little bit new with the unboxing. Sometimes it can take me a while. I like to stare at the Higo. I like to slowly cut the tape away. I'm going to try from now on to fit my unboxings in 90 seconds. If I fail, no big deal. In the comments, you can let me know that I failed. Otherwise, you'll still get that nice ASMR experience for those that do love the unboxing ASMR. And otherwise, I also don't waste too much of your time 90 seconds and we go from start to finish. Finish being, hmm, let's see, what kind of requirement do I want to put on myself? Essentially having the knife in hand in 90 seconds. So let's dive into the unboxing and we'll come back to talk about the blade. So, hope you guys enjoyed that unboxing. That was my first 90 second unboxing and hopefully the first of many to come. Let's talk about what I'm holding in my hands. In my hands is a 214 millimeter Gyoto made of 26 C3 steel. I'll put some knife steel charts up here on screen. Essentially, it's also known as spicy white. It has a mirror polish. He's finished the edge at 1K, which was a specification that I had for him. Beautifully polished spine and finger choil. The handle is black ash burl with G10 spacers. Before we talk about the unboxing, there's something I want to bring to your attention. Before I received the knife, I kept thinking, why is his logo a B? Like, I get it, his name is Baldwin. It's pretty bold to use the first letter of your family name to make it your company name. But then, as you saw in the unboxing, I realized that it is so much more than just a B. Of course, as you can now see because of the unboxing, 
part of the B, right, the left side, instead of just being a straight line up down, it's a knife. And so that gave me so much more appreciation for his logo because it wasn't as simple as I originally thought. And in fact, it's quite genius. Now for the unboxing, as you saw, it comes in the equivalent of a Kiri box, which was super impressive to me. I've never seen an American maker or anyone outside of Japan deliver their knives in a Kiri type box. On that note, I do want you to know that I actually also now have a playlist, which is non-Japanese made knives. And so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link right up here. So the Kiri experience, the Kiri box experience was fantastic. For some reason, I struggled to open it. Uh, I did find it a little bit large. I do wonder if he has kind of like a one size fits all box or if it's just he likes to make it larger than not. Of course, you know that I'm very specific in the way that I unbox things, the way I look at them, try to be very detail oriented. It does move a little bit, not a big deal, but just something, uh, of course, that I had noticed. But the biggest thing to me is, is I would give Matt two suggestions for that Kiri box. A, I think it should be optional, right? If it should be something that he promotes. And if you want it, it should come at an additive cost because I imagine to him, it also comes at an additive cost instead of just wrapping the knife. But the second thing that I noticed that I'd really like to see is that knife had no real blade protection, right? It was kind of just sitting in the box. If it's something like you go pick it up at your local shop, maybe that's not too bad. But given the fact too that this was shipped from US to Canada, I would be worried that maybe something could happen to the edge. So I think it's worth maybe investing in either a blade guard or some foam insert for that box if that box is going to come with every single knife. Something else I like about Matt Baldwin is just how easy he is to speak to. Ever since he contacted me on Instagram, he's been a joy to speak to. I really like the handle on his Instagram profile. You should go check out his profile. I think it says something like knife maker and expert in hand injuries. Go ask him yourself how many hand injuries he's had. He has had quite a few. His knives are also available, I believe, with Tara from Perfect Edge Cutlery in California. With the beautiful unboxing of his knife also came a really nice business card. I really like the somewhat personalized letter. I say somewhat because at the bottom right of the letter, of course, he reminds you what he sent you. And also, of course, he sent that sticker with the huge B, which re-emphasizes that it is not just a B, it's in fact quite an ingenious logo. Now, without further ado, what do you say we put this knife to the test? I tested this knife over a few weeks so that I can test it against a slew of ingredients. So, of course, in the background, you'll see me having changed t-shirts many times. That's because I did not film it today, but over the past few weeks. So let's dive into the food demo, and then we'll come back and I'll share my thoughts about the knife and its performance. See you soon. Lots of suction on the blade, but cut through the potato really well. The onion did cut well, but there's a bit of friction going through and the blade pulls ever so slightly to the right.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that food demo. Now let's talk about the knife. And I want to start with telling Matt, because Matt, I'm hoping you're watching this, with the largest compliment I have about the knife before I get into the constructive feedback aspect. So to me, this is the most Japanese feeling kitchen knife that I've ever owned outside of a Japanese knife maker. Matt, I think that is a huge compliment to you because as you had told me, since the Masamoto is kind of the staple of knife style and function that influenced you to create knives of your own, I think you've succeeded in that aspect. It is very light, it is very nimble, it is very comfortable to hold, it's pretty much balanced at the pinch grip. It feels like a natural extension of my hand and for that I think that is a huge win because to think that you're inspired by something and of course you can't duplicate it but you want to recreate it in a fashion of your own with the polished finger choil and spine, this is a knife that I could use for a very long time. And on top of that, let me compliment you further and say that not only is it the most Japanese feeling knife in hand, and it truly does have that classic Gyoto profile, but what I also like about it is unlike most of my really, 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 really favorite Japanese kitchen knives made in Japan, which are quite delicate, this guy, this guy's a bit of a workhorse, which makes me super comfortable to do something like rock sweep it, which I did with the green onion. Or I might not have a problem trying to put this through a swash, of course, as long as I don't tweak, because I would have faith that the edge would not chip. So for that, honestly, congratulations. Now, of course, this knife did not perform equally everywhere. With the cherry tomato test, again, probably one of the better knives that I've tested on a cherry tomato outside of a knife made in Japan. And that is, again, a huge compliment to Matt. Now, I did specifically ask because he asked me, would you like me to finish the edge on a 1K or 6K? And I said I'd like the 1K finish because I like a knife with more bite. And as you all know, I eat lots of salads and I love to cut cherry tomatoes. I probably go through a huge tub a week. And so this knife performed really well and it performed even a little bit better after I used it on a leather strap. Now, the other thing I liked about my interactions with Matt is that he had asked me some specific questions like how would I like my edge finished or the handle? Am I someone who likes smaller handles or bigger handles? And so he sent me some progress pics of the build. And I always think that that is a great attention to detail from a maker because it shows that they not only care in the end product, but the end user and want to establish a nice relationship. So thank you for having sent those. And of course, you've just seen those up on screen. Now, despite having requested for a smaller handle, I'll be honest that when I saw it, I thought actually that handle is even smaller than I had expected. And I think in large part, that is due to the fact that it essentially has no shoulders, right? The tang is the same width as the handle. Now the handle is hexagonal and again, super comfortable to hold. I wasn't a fan of the mirror polish, but it being carbon steel, that means I could use it and create my own finish. So of course that mirror polish has been dulled a little bit and now I'm a much bigger fan of the overall look of the knife. Small specificity, you see this logo, his logo right here. Now I've noticed on a few of his pictures of his knives on Instagram, that logo is not always stamped in the same place. Now I'm not sure if that is a conscious decision that he makes depending on the length or if that's just a consistency issue. But again, kind of just something that I want to point out because that's the whole point of these reviews is to try to give constructive feedback. Now, probably the biggest point of contention that I have or the biggest piece of feedback that I can deliver to Matt. So I've said a bunch of great things and this is a great knife and you've seen it in action. It did really great on the cabbage as well. For something like a potato, there wasn't great. Food release was not only not great, but um, the suction was surreal. I think I even said it at the end of that clip. I think this knife would have benefited from five extra minutes on his grinding wheel or hand sanding, whatever he uses. Because the edge, as you can see again in the food demo, it does a really great job once it's pierced, but that initial pierce just makes me feel like that edge geometry, rather than being just a super sharp V, is ever so slightly flat. That's just my opinion based on using it and kind of looking at the blade even in slow motion. I watched it on the computer to see where's the struggle, and that struggle just seems to be that first incision. Again, I have used it on the leather strop to just see if I can improve the edge spiciness. And I've done my best to do that. I of course haven't put it on the stones, but that's just something that I wanted to kind of bring forth as a piece of advice to maybe spend an extra five minutes on the wheel. Not sure if that would have mattered, but it just, everything about it is so fantastic. 
I just wish it performed a little bit better in those in that millisecond before it pierces. It pulling right a little bit on the white onion, to be honest, that's probably me. So if you do notice that in the footage, honestly, it doesn't matter whether I'm cutting bread, a cherry tomato cabbage, I feel like it's probably just an issue with my elbow alignment. So not a flaw of the blade. I'm fairly certain that this is a nice 50-50 grind and at least appears so when I take a look at it. So that's essentially it. You've seen an unboxing, you've learned a little bit more about Matt Baldwin, you've seen the knife in action, fantastic blade. A knife like this, if you're interested, retails for roughly 450 USD. He has knives, of course, at a lower price point and also a much higher price point if you're looking for something like Damascus. But thank you so much, Matt, for trusting me to send me this knife. I hope you enjoyed this knife review and until next time.